Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hopefully everybody is doing okay. Uh, let's make sure everything is going okay here. There may not have been sound on the beginning credits. I don't know if that is the case. I'll turn that down, make sure I don't have anything else on. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Uh, give me just a second here to make sure everything's going in the right direction. Uh, hang on, just one more second. I'm sorry. <clears throat> sound is fine. Okay, so we are good to go. I don't know if there was sound in the credits, but um, I do rounds every, I don't know, three or four weeks. And I've been making the rounds with uh, people that I source from. And I've actually mounted some really nice items here. We're going to show a few things. Uh, that I hauled. We're going to talk about them and then we'll go into some other things as well. Now, I love autographs, vintage Hollywood and things along that line. We'll holler out some names and things like that. Um, I was lucky enough to source uh, quite a bit of Hollywood memorabilia as well as autographs. And I really love autographs. Now, most of these are going to have to be sent in. I don't know. Let me see if I can switch where I can see directly if you can see these people. Now, these are all hand, uh, hand signed. They're signed to a very specific person. So the odds that everybody would happen to have fake uh, you know, ones with different people's names on them. Just, it makes no sense. These are definitely good to go. Looked at them closely. It's all done with pen. There's no fakery, nothing else. I got paperwork with this person too. They were a Hollywood, like a, not a producer, um, a promoter of sorts. So they knew all these people, you know, intimately and knew them very well. So Dana Andrew, or yeah, Dana Andrew, I think is what this one is. I've looked some of these up. They're all actually from movies. Maybe that was Dial M for Murder. Maybe that's what that one was in. I don't have everybody's name figured out yet, but I recognize the faces. I spent some money. We spent, I don't know, a few thousand dollars on stuff. You're just going to see a small portion of it. I'll probably have some other videos on some of what we got. Now, this one's puzzling because I know the face, but I, for the life of me, can't figure out who she is. I can't make out her signature. Really wished I could, but uh, unfortunately, I can't tell who that is. If somebody knows who that is, please pop it in there. I haven't done um, uh, Google Lens or anything yet, but I will. Now, this next one isn't signed. I wished it was, but I'll give people a minute to figure out who that is. I know who this is. This is someone very well, very well known. I don't want to give out too much. Bob Cummings, is that who that is? No, it, it's he... I guess it might be, but it looks like Robin or Robert. So maybe he's going under Robert Cummings at the time. Um, I think I've had it up for a minute here where people should know who this is, hopefully. This is Lillian Munster from the Munsters TV series. Uh, Yvonne DiCarlo is who this is, but this is what she was a bombshell, they would have called her back in the day. She did a lot of pinup, but this is Lily, uh, Lillian Munster from the Munsters. Believe it or not, I've got quite a few from from her actually. Um, I love these sorts of things because most people wouldn't know who this is. Like Irene Dunn, I'm sure somebody knows who Irene Dunn is. She was Granny from uh, the Beverly Hillbillies, but before in the 30s, she was like one of the top notch bombshell actresses of the day as well. Now this is Audrey Totter. Now she's very well known, and this one's a Christmas one. Uh, circa 1944, 45 era. This one, as an original studio sent out one, should do very well. In fact, it actually has some signature on. I'm gonna have to check out on the back. There's a faint signature, but very well. This is a pinup style, excellent. Dorothy Hart, another bombshell of the day. Penny Singleton was blonde in the photo. Penny Singleton. That doesn't look like it's Penny Singleton in the signature. Last name starts with an H, if that's that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, Irene Dunn was Granny. Um, yeah, that's not Penny Singleton. Whoever it is, their last name starts with an H in that one. This one here. Last name starts with an H. I don't know if anybody knows who that is, but the last name starts with, with an H. You can see it down over there. Definitely her last name. I've looked up through a few things. Now, here's one I knew, too, as well. I'm 
I'm going to show you the one of the best ones at the end here because it's someone's um, probably keeping a couple of them. Tim Holt was a very well-known Western actor. He's been a lot of things. I have some arcade cards with Tim Holt and a bunch of the Westerns that he did. True fledged signature. It's a nice early Hollywood image. It's actually on like a um, really thick paper. And on top of that, there is the artist's impression of who took this. I don't know how well that's going to show off there, but you should be able to see the name now down on there. So these are definitely real Hollywood ones. More expensive. These aren't the cheapo ones they, they would hand out. It's on real nice paper. I mean, super, super quality paper. It's not yellowed or anything else, which was really impressive, too, from the 40s. Um, and now this one I'm not 100% sure on. I didn't show it to the wife yet. We probably have like 260 different photos. Most of them are signed. Um, quite a few. I haven't even looked through every single one to figure out who it is, but I can't figure out who she is yet either, but... George Nader. This one's fairly obvious. Um, this one's a real nice one, too. Loretta Young. And most people should at least know who that is. And she signed it, too. It's unfortunate she didn't put her last name, but it's still a hand hand rendered. Uh, again, this one's on real fine paper. I mean, this stuff is thick paper. Just You don't see it. This is a Hollywood one. It has like um, a texture to it, almost. Very, very nice one here, too. Some of these are going to be worth a couple hundred bucks. Most of them are going to get sent off. Um, let me show you a couple of the more interesting ones. I got around 20 on top of the photos. I got around 20 Disney, Warner Brothers, um, Irks, a bunch of the early studios. This is an original promo card for Pinocchio when it first came out. It has some damage. Somebody must have had it taped down on a wall or something like that. Some of these look like they were removed from a display at some point. Even like this, it's probably a $75 piece. My favorite, which I haven't determined if I'm going to keep, this is 1944-45 promo for the early Bugs Bunny shorts that would run at the intermissions and things like that in the movie theater. This is the real deal. This is, I mean, probably the oldest Mickey, or probably the oldest Bugs Bunny item I probably own right now is right here in my hand, which I was kind of surprised Yeah, Artie, you're, you're, Mike, you're saying it's Penny Singleton. There's no, the signature, I'll look it up, but the signature, I don't know why she would have written another name on it. That's that's my puzzlement on it, if that's what you're saying it is. Because it, it's definitely, there's no way that's a Penny, and it's sincerely, and then the name. There's I just, I can't, I'll have to look into a little more, but I there's no way these are fake signatures, so I'm going to have to figure out that one. Yeah, I'm, I might keep this one just because it's early. It has a slight crease to it, but so I haven't seen one of these before ever. In all these years of, of looking through stuff, I've never run into one of these early originals. It, I mean, it, it's it's all the way original. You can just tell by the paper. Uh, excellent piece here. Just something I never, ever see. Now, the next one I'm keeping. Um, I've got a John Wayne similar to this that I kept from like 10 years ago. Um most people should know who this is. This is, again, the real deal. Uh, I'm keeping this one. I, I've looked at this one closely. I may send it off and just get it authenticated for my own personal uh, use. My John Wayne's authenticated as well. But um, this is like the classic movies I used to watch with my dad. So Robert Mitchum, I've always, always thought he was cool in the movies. I don't know what personal-wise, but this one here is worth like 250 to 500 bucks. So I'm, I'm going to hang on to that one for a little while. Now, this one I may or may not sell at all at this point. This is John Barrymore. Uh, I mean, he signed it, too. His signature is like 250 or better. Um, I'm going to have to get this one authenticated, but I'm, I have no doubt with... I've got contracts for some of these people here in this lot. i got a whole bunch of paper that goes with some of this stuff, too. So this is probably one of the better ones here. I'm probably going to sell this one because I, don't, I, I can't think of a single thing he's been in that I've personally seen. I mean, he's he's before my time. Robert Mitchum's a different story. Um, there's a ton of movies he was in. I mean, just a ton of movies. So, And there, I got some musicians. I've got all three, the Andrews sisters. I've got um, the Tico Tico lady. Oh, shoot, what's her name? She, uh, I can't think of her name. Um, 
Carmen Miranda. I got Carmen Miranda's autograph. I got Fernando Lamas's autograph too, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, he's dressed as a a Western star because that's he was at one time. Uh, let's bounce around just a few minutes here because I've got some other interesting items to show. I love. Well, let's show this one here first because this one was really neat. I picked up some books. I'm just going to show you one here. It's something I never see. Now this is old. It's out of service. Nothing that's in this book is valid in any way, shape, or form because what's talked about in this book doesn't exist anymore. So even though it says restricted, this is one of those 1943 issues that I could still possess. I could sell it locally, but eBay won't allow me probably to list this at all. Just FYI, I have a buyer for these. I got a bunch of these all related to, and I'll show you in just a minute here. Um, this was revised in 43. Uh, just to give you an idea here. Now, this is for navigation. Let me, so you can see it. This is for navigation on a specific amount of uh, specific ships. It even tells you the ships that would have possessed this book. And only one book of these was printed per ship. No extras. There's even a notice that this was supposed to have been signed by the commanding officer was supposed to sign off on this book to get this book. So it was a, a hefty book because if obvious, obviously the enemy got this one, it shows their compass and guidance system for our Navy ships from 1943. It's, it's very uh, detailed in every little aspect of it. This is what you would expect to find. When you're looking at the old movies and you see like the captain's room or, you know, and he's sitting back and there's all the books behind him. This is one of the books that would have been behind a Navy captain, you know. Um, I've got a bunch of them, as I said. There's a bunch. They all pretty much are of stuff you've probably never heard of, like gyro compass and things like that. But they all would have been on battle cruisers. A couple of them have names on them of the ship who signed it and the whole works. And the commanding officer's signature on them as well. This is one of the better condition ones. So they're not in super, super condition. But either way, I mean, you could recreate your own you know gyro compass with this book it has every single dimension i mean for just a compass this is a, a darn big book with schematics for every single piece that it would take to fix this at sea so i mean it's got tons of fold outs tons of schematics they all do there's one on the radio system there's one on a torpedo launch assembly you know, how to load it and stuff like that. It goes into details. It tells you where every single bolt in these things is. Every screw, every piece of rubber, wire, everything that's that it takes to build. Any of the equipment that's in these books is shown in the books, which was very interesting. I've never seen those before. And I thought I've seen it all when it comes to stuff like that. But, you know, knowing that it's only one per ship, they didn't make extra because they didn't want them falling around. They were printed specially just for the ships when they were commissioned handed over supposedly where you had to sign from i don't know if that was an unissued one or what but i love those sorts of things i don't know about everybody else but hang on just a second i will hop back let me just hop up to the front here because um i know it disappears if i yap too long i got quite a few other things to show I picked up a bunch of action figures. I do sell the Halo stuff very, very easily these days. With Christmas here, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to get them all out. I got quite a few. I got a whole bunch of the same ones. I got three different figures and like 10 of one and 12 another one and nine, I think, of the other one. But um, I don't know what I'm going to do with these yet. They're new NOS, never been touched. I don't know. I didn't even look up the, the version because this is the least of my interest at the time. They were cheap, a dollar a piece. I figure I can't go wrong on those. Um, postcard wise. Now I am able to, in many cases, buy, I know I skipped chat, but hang on just a second here. We'll go back to chat. I'm able to buy a family's postcard book. And that's what this is. Um, if you've seen some of my postcards, seen what we've sold, I sell them. I've sold postcards for right at the thousand dollar mark. I've sold a bunch for 400, 500, 700. I sell them for 50 to a hundred bucks all the time. Um, so I love finding these, especially, I'm going to cover up a name because I don't want, I told the family I wouldn't discuss a name with anybody but the buyer. But anyway, there's a lot of personable, intimate photos of family members, some from war related in here. They're all ID'd. Every place in here is either on the back of the card or written under it. Um, 
who they are is written on the back of them too where they are is written on the back of them some of them have an entire story on the back some of them are, are rather interesting with you know again names dates where it was taken um what was going on in there and this girl's got some really long hair which i thought was pretty interesting um just some unique images here this is the sort of thing that you may not think a lot because it's just some common photo but this stuff actually sells you know far too many people you know push it aside if you know the location of where an image was taken you will always do far better than just some random image if i just have an image of a lady standing in front of a hay haystack with a cow there it means nothing it might be a five dollar card but if i have this was on thomas ellis's farm in dakota territory at such and such it means something then somebody a historic a historian a historical society person from that area is going to want it because it, it's someone who they can trace track genealogists will buy this stuff from us too i i love these early ones that show i know it's a little hard to focus sometimes show images like this it's all detailed and who's that who's in there uh, and it does look to have location on I can tie these to, you know, the original owner and stuff like that. I've sold, again, these types of postcards, 20 30 bucks for ones that I can name to a specific place. Now, let me show you some of the ones I pulled out of here. This one's, I don't know, I don't think this one should be too bad. Let me, let me show it to you. Okay, now this person, the person whose book this, this came from, was overseas he was in the military during world war one he captured photos that he brought back these are bringbacks these are all german original and this is a german i think he's an officer rats inside the trenches this is literally them standing in a trench and somebody's messing with him and they've hung up dead rats that they killed in the trenches this is the type of oddball oddity, and you can make out very clearly the emblem on his hat is a German emblem without a doubt. The numbers, his, his epaulets on his sleeves, the whole works. It's in a trench. It's World War I, 1917, I think this one was taken. These are the sorts of things that you find in these big, and again, let's, let's show you. This is a pretty big, big book here. So this is the type of thing that I find in these family books. Somebody will look through it, see a couple of images some nondescript things like this let me get it back in focus there like this here now this one without a doubt over here on this side it's basically saying copying verboten which is forbidden it's there's a copyright on these even from the germans who actually printed this and lipstick i think is where this one was printed the names of the towns and stuff are all here these are bombing damage photos that were taken by the german government is from what it looks like and i say that because let's make sure i got the right one because let me back up a little bit there this is von hindenburg Gen basically field marshal hindenburg uh, and that's him on the battlefield, and that's him facing our direction. These are officers from the front line in the trenches that he was greeting on a visit. Now, there was some information on this exact card here with this stuff because they were talking about it. It's in German. I, do, I, I can read a little bit of German. I did take it for four years. So this one was quite interesting to me that it was confiscated. So the guy in the front... It, with the a pickle bomb is the officer in charge of these troops here who owned these photos prior to them being captured by a USGI and then confiscated brought back when he came back in 1919 and ended up in a family album I ended up with that family album there's only two people alive that would even have any clue on on any of the people in these and they didn't care at all so luckily I was able to I own the rights to these too um now these these type i've run into before too this is a german soldier holding one of their artillery shells again it's verboten so it's it's forbidden now this one is a known image here not a known image but a known shell look at the size of that shell this is from a rail car basically and this thing could launch like five miles so this one, the last one of these I had wasn't a real photo. It was just an image, and it was French 
um, captured German shells. It wasn't the real deal with the German. These aren't super pricey, but I should get 35 to 57 50 No, no problem at all. I'm probably going to put like 75 on this one alone. Um, you can easily tell he's German. You can see his buckle, Gottmit, uh, Gottmit Uns, which is go with God, is what his buckle said. So just FYI. I got a whole bunch of them, too. There's, there's a mess of damaged photos. I mean, they go on. All located buildings, a couple famous churches. Here's a real neat one. This is after they blew up. Now, I'm not condoning this. I'm just, they're valuable. I love military. They blew up the church. There was a sniper on the top of the to church tower, apparently, and they blew up the church tower, and the bell come tumbling down. So that's a German officer with a bell, a massive bell from a French church. And I have the town in here, too, but that's just a few of those things, too. Let me show you something else that many people don't know. Now, this is a real picture, real photo postcard. This is a cyanotype. Now, most people don't know what that is, but this is printed in blue, and that's it's it's a real photo. This is exactly a, a real photo, but it's it's a cyanotype. Um, there's a couple other colors. I've had uh, like a ruby type, which was a red image. I've seen yellow ones. Never seen a green, but I've seen some odd colors before. This is, again, a real photo. Circa by the back, it's probably... It's like 1908 on the back. It's got the name. It's got the location. Um, so, I mean, I, I can date these. I can list them fairly well. They're nice images. Even something like this, I should be able to get like 8 to 10 bucks for. It's not a super expensive card, but I've got, I don't know, maybe 200 cards in here. I mean, this thing is full of cards. I mean, you name it, it's all in here. All types of farming, uh, locations, the birth of a cow, horses, carriages, family photos, barns, um, just some real nice images here all the way around. Some cute kids with dolls, a couple old cars. I love all that kind of stuff. I usually keep the old car images, but quick, easy sale on some items here. I'll sell a couple of cards. It'll pay for this entire purchase, and I'll have hundreds and hundreds of other cards I can list. There's at least a couple hundred worth listing in here. All of these are definitely a $15 or better card right off the bat. So this is the sort of thing that, you know, I hunt down, I source out. This is from somebody else who picked this up with me in mind. I don't know what they made off of it. I haven't a clue. Maybe they paid 10 bucks for it, for all I know. Um, I have a letter from the family. It's been notarized with permission to actually reprint or do whatever I want. That's something that I ask if people can get it. I'll give them some extra money if they do do that. I'm fine with that. So I know the people this came from. I've got some other information from them as well, too. So I even have their phone number if I want to call them. So, um, again, they got what they wanted out of it. This is photos of people that have been long since dead. Um, I don't know when they died. I didn't even ask. But the point was that the people who are living, who are selling the estate that this, this came from, don't even know who most of these people are. They only can tell who a couple of people are from other photos who have a name written on them. So, you know, after a while when there's nobody around or they're unimportant, a lot of family photos turn up because of that. There's nobody out there. Some people think, well, don't be selling other families' photos. It's not right to sell this or sell that. If I didn't sell it, this would have probably went in the dump or been donated, and who knows who would have got it either way. So at least I can properly identify, market it, sell it to somebody who's going to want it and, and put it in their collection. So this stuff will live on. So a lot of people criticize people like us for selling dead people stuff, you know. But in, in all honesty, a lot of the stuff wouldn't be around if we didn't do this. If it didn't make it in the hands of a collector, it probably wouldn't be around, you know. So I always think of it that way, too. Let's hop back over here. I know Artie Mike's in the house. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. For those in Patreon, because I already see a couple in Patreon, I just posted a new video. I've got some posters. Uh, I had quite a few questions on larger printings and stuff like that. When the first one sells, I'm going to show in a video for Patreons to how I'm shipping it. I've got some video that I shot of, sh of some large... I've got door-sized posters. Like, I got a Bruce Lee poster. I've got some real nice early posters from the 50s, 60s that were we photoed. I'm going to have some video up on that in probably the next week. I've got another video from some Q&A for Patreon that's going to be up this week. And there'll probably be two more up this weekend. One on Saturday and one on Sunday as well. Um, I've got a real interesting one, and I've got a bolo coming up for Patreons this weekend, too. 
it, I think it'll be something a lot of people will be more prone to find than not to. So, um, Nicholas Tracy, how are you doing? James Sims, since posting last video, we have sold even more vintage menus. Thanks for expanding our minds and possibilities. I haven't even gotten to the menus. Um, we've got a bunch of posters here, and I just picked up some more. So, and I had some questions, so I've been trying to get up posters. Um, record store posters. I know Dom's had a bunch, Primetime Treasure. I know I thought I saw him in the house. Um, he's got a bunch that he sold for some big, uh, good money. I've been sitting on some for a long time, and the stack has gotten to be unmanageable at this point. I've got like three feet of solid posters. I picked up enough to fit in one of my totes, and I started photoing it. So I literally measured out enough to fit in one of these, and that's how many I took photos of. We got 300 and some odd I want to get up in the next week or so. Just posters. Um, all like, um, uh, what's what's some of the names? I'm, like, I'm not going to remember the names. I can't remember that. Paramore is in there, I want to say. Um, Lady Hawks. There's, there's a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, there's a bunch of Jack White posters in there. There's some, um, geez, a bunch of stuff. Older stuff. Jane's Addiction was in there. A um, bunch of stuff like that. I, Dido, I'm not a big fan of most of them. I don't even know who half the performers are in some of the posters, but it doesn't stop me from buying hundreds of them for 10 cents a piece or whatever it ends up being. Uh, let's see here. AJI3 Sales, how are you doing? I did the same. I bought a lot of old menus and paper placemats uh, from Pennsylvania, and they all sold for good money. They would have been worth anything yet alone. The amount I got. Where did the cold weather go? Yeah, right now it's like 20 degrees outside right here. I had my heavy thing on over this even earlier today, but I had to go to the BMV and stuff, and I've been running around since like, oh, jeez, what time did I get out of bed? Like 6.20 this morning. I, that's sleeping in for me. I was been up since then and been running since then. Um, I do rounds, as I was saying earlier. I do rounds of, of pickers. If I don't buy stuff from people, they don't call me. They'll call people who will buy immediately. So you, when somebody gets stuff for you, whether you want to take it or not, you, you buy it. I mean, it's good stuff. I can't complain. I can sell a couple quick items and get all my money back without any kind of doubt. I got a real good book to show you at the end here. Um, I was just like... Uh, let's just say I would have been shaken if I if I if I didn't uh, realize it uh, what what I had until I got home. When I got home, I started to look into this this last item I'll show you in a few minutes here, and I was like, oh my gosh, because it has some major history to it as well. Now I love this sort of thing. Let me hop over so I can make sure it's in focus. Let's see if I can get it in focus. Okay, now this is a Cinderella faux bill. And it's both sides. This is, I don't know, 1880s, 1890s-ish. I've had dozens and dozens of this sort. I've shown them before in, in, in a, uh, a video many, many times. This is basically like a coupon almost to some extent. Believe it or not, these bills, these faux bills that you know don't look like much, I mean, it's still pretty crispy. I can't complain. You should be able to hear how crispy this thing is. Um, excellent condition. It's not fragile. I might get 175 bucks for this. The last one of these I sold for a soap company went for like 150, and it wasn't this nice. It didn't have the nice crispiness to it. It didn't have the spectacular back on this thing. It looks like real currency. You can feel the. It's from a steel plate engraving. You can feel it. I mean, that's just amazing because they took the time to recreate a bill the way a bill was printed. In fact, it might even have been printed by. I don't think I'm going to see this without a loop. Hang on. I, I'm curious on this one. No, it wasn't. But sometimes I've run into these that were printed by the American Banknote Company. If you don't know what the American Banknote Company is, you need to look that up right now and write that down. Anything that says the American Banknote Company on it should be bought. As long as it's early, as long as it's an engraved piece. The American Banknote Company made our early bills and postage stamps for a very long time. They made stuff for other countries. Occasionally, I run into stuff like these Cinderella's. That's what this would be called. It's a Cinderella. It's a coupon. It has like four or five different categories I can sell this thing in. And because it was just made to be turned in to, to save money 
Most everybody turned them in. No one wanted to keep it because it meant they could save so much money the next time they bought this item. This is an expensive print job. So this is a, a fairly expensive coupon. It's worth a couple bars of soap, basically. So this is a big deal back then. This isn't something you just get for nothing. Again, the last ones of this type I've sold, I got like 150 for. I've sold some of these faux facsimile Cinderella's here for almost $300. I had one from California. It was some raisin manufacturer in like 1882 or 83. And it was a, I mean, it was a nice bill, but it, it wasn't even quite this nice, but it, it sold for almost $300. So whenever I have a chance to get into a, a like a advertising collection or there's people that collect coupons. I don't know if everybody knows that. Um, there's people that chits. I've talked about chits before. C-H-I-T-S is a chit. And those were... It's like a voucher for so much money is what that is. Those are like coupon collectors will collect those. These show up in coupon collector collections. They're usually advertised collectors. They usually end up buying print ads. It all ties together. If a print ad would show this or show get your your coupon or your script or your, your notes to redeem later in the, in the print ad, those things go for some big bucks. There's I've only seen a few of those. Now let me show you something else that I always, always nab up. Now, I'm going to cover up the last name. I have full rights to do with this one what I want. They've long since been dead. Um, but anyway, this is just a standard what looks like a name card, a calling card. These folks, though, helped to create some of the sign language. And what's on the back of this is the old-style sign language. If you're not aware, there's early versions of sign language that have changed I'm not sure on this one. I'm going to have to really dig into this one and pull out. I've, I've got a book on this, actually, on just sign language cards. There's a bunch of them shown in there. I've sold some from, geez, a, a Native American um, school in Oklahoma, and I, I've got a button or two from there, but some of those are even more expensive. I've sold sign language cards, like um, donation cards, like give you know, five cents to, to this group. Uh, there's Braille cards just like this. Um, that'll be all in Braille on the back side. They'll be a little bigger sometimes, but any of these that show early sign language or Braille of any kind from the early days, almost all of them sell for some phenomenal money. I mean, some really good money. Uh, I've never uh, never had an issue with stuff like that. Now, I'm going to show you the, the, this card here too, I think. Um, yeah, I guess I'll show it to you here. This is, this is one I might end up keeping for a little while too. This came with some postcards, this one here. This is a wire fence, like a stretcher. This was this was how they wrapped it around the pole. It was a movable device. It, it's actually kind of neat in, in all honesty. You could use this for doing um, barbed wire. That's the point of this card. This is an engraved advertising card, Victorian trade card, 1872-73 era. I haven't seen anything like this. So to a, a barbed wire collector, something like this might be worth $150, $200. Uh, you can look those up. I mean, that's that's going right for barbed wire, cheapo barbed wire cards, good barbed wire cards. Um, another area that I always buy in, and a lot of people seem to pass up or just don't realize what the temperance movement was or the temperance union was. Anything that says the temperance movement, union, any of that kind of stuff I always nab up, especially cards, and let's get in focus, the temperance union, especially stuff like this. It's like the anti-saloon league, um, abstinence league, don't drink and all that kind of stuff. It's basically abstaining from alcoholic beverages, what these kind of cards are. Most of them are fairly scarce. These are like personal commitments um, to some extent. Um, I guess you have to know a little history on society, what was going on back then, but these cards are, are as good as gold. I mean, it might actually be worth its weight in gold. It, it's probably a $75 card or better. only weighs, you know, a couple of grams in all honesty. So it could actually be worth its weight in gold. Um, let's see, Wabash, Indiana. I've got a couple of these. I love these early cards. Now, many people will pass up... Let me get it back in focus. Many people pass up cards like this. This is basically a giant business card. Those in Patreon, you know I showed you some business cards. You know I just sold $300 worth of business cards just the other day. I've sold some more since then of some other ones that we've had up to. Not Chinese-related ones, but uh, I love early cards like this. Now, this falls into the realm of Victorian trade cards, but this is technically a business card, without a doubt. 
it's interesting. It's unique. There's no graphics on it, but because of what it is, the age this is, the size will help you date these two. Most of the cards are bigger like this. It didn't cost much to print a, a little larger card that would stand out. Most of the cards that were advertising for stores and businesses in 1870s, 1880s, were colorful. They were meant to draw the kids attention, someone would want to collect them, tack them on the wall as like artwork. Now these were trying to compete but at a cheaper basis so you at least see them. They tried to make them a larger card. Little tiny cards, those little ones get lost a lot. Not worth a lot of money. They're not very graphic. You know, it's just one of those things. I love these sorts of things too. Um, Agricultural Society cards, Wabash County as well. I got a couple, I don't know, maybe six, eight, ten of these. These are like membership cards from specific years. This one's got a little damage, but I'm fine with that too. It's very dateable, very ideable. Everything about it is just like perfect. The date is is key to pushing it. That The date section, I'll center in on that for the main image for my zoom in on my listings. I mean, most of these cards will get me 35 to say 75, 150 bucks for some of the better ones like I showed you. Look up um, sign language cards. Look up Braille cards. Those are those are two areas that I always always go go for. I just sold a Hebrew orphanage button the other day for over a hundred bucks. Orphanages do well. Um, a Saint asylums do well. I sold a, a Saint asylum button the other day for I think forty eight bucks. Um, penitentiaries. Most penitentiary items sell very well. This morning I sold one from Eastern States Penitentiary. Um, I think it was like Philadelphia area, if I'm not mistaken. I think it had a Philadelphia emblem in the center. But a button, I got 2870 or 2890, I think, out of that one. Um, and then I sold another one, which was Juvenile. Maybe it was Juvenile Asylum, I think is what the front of that one said. Any of those sorts of things. Asylums, um, sanitariums. And I've t for those in Patreon, I've, we've, we've discussed sanitariums in, in the video about ad, a print ad. So... All of those sorts of things are places that I look for. When I lived in Mississippi, there was a sanitarium near Collins, Mississippi, and I think it was like between Collins and Newton, Mississippi. Whoever could get into that building, you'd probably find some good stuff. It was still being run barely when I think I was there. I, th I think they wanted to, to sell it off the state. Those are the type of places that I hunt down and find stuff at. Buildings that are no longer used, and you can track those down through old records, like a, a directory from 1950, a city directory. They usually list buildings, what was here, what was there. You can figure out who owns. I, I've, I've went over this before. Too, far too many people don't think outside the box and don't go after stuff. If you go after stuff, you pen down where something might be. You're going to do far better than just randomly hoping to find something. I'm never hoping just to find something. I'm always targeting where I'm going, so there's always a higher chance of me finding something good. Either it's going to be a bust or I'm going to find something good is usually what happens. Um, let's pop down. I know I'm popping around a lot. Michael Sanborn, good evening as well. Marty, Jiminy Flippet, how are you doing, Jiminy? Jimny, I'm sorry. Charles Lowe, how are you doing, Charles? I suppose you're listing Eastern 4th of July stuff now. I love how you wisely stay way ahead of the season. I, I, in all honesty, I think we've listed most of the cards. I've got, I've got a stack to list. I'll step off screen for once. These are Easter cards right here. Most of these are Easter cards. So that gives you an idea on how many Easter cards. Those have been scanned already, and we're probably going to list those. I've got some 4th of July. There might be 20 or 30, but I haven't invested into those. I don't buy much in the winter. So I have maybe 70 Easter cards or something like that. That's going to be the bulk of it, other than some Easter greeting cards that I have. Fourth of July, I got like 25 or so. I've been centering in on the stuff that I can make, I guess, easier to sell stuff, I guess. Plus, it's more in demand. Um, let's show you a couple other cards I got, just to give you another idea. Now, everybody should know, Music Man. This is Robert. Is that who that, I think that is. I can't, I can't my, my vision's so terrible, I'm sorry. Robert Preston, a yeah, music man. So this is Robert Preston's autographed here. Stuff like this is what I center in. And stuff that I know if I send it in, I can get some pretty good money out of it. I got the Andrews sisters there. Um, I love postcards. So for me, postcards are always wonderful. I'll show you some more postcards. 
Yvonne DiCarlo again, Lillian Munster. Um, and this is actually from her uh, publicity department. It's from Hollywood. It's got her facsimile signature down there. Um, another one, a different version of it. Uh, let's see here. Dot, uh, it says Dottie Lamore. I don't know if that's supposed to be... I don't know. That doesn't quite look like Dorothy Lamore. It says Dottie Lamore. Again, stuff like this. I make some really good money. These are all RPPCs. Every one of these ones I'm showing you. You know, Bonafide. They're, they're RPPCs. Famous people, as you can see. Now, there's some autographs in a few of these I pulled out already. I've got a nice Lucille Ball autograph. We're trying to determine if it's real or not. It does look to be real. I've got a Joan Crawford, too. I'll probably have another video and maybe show you some. Now, we're sending these in. I'm going to go ahead and, and send them off to one of the authentication companies here. Um, the Red Skelton Show. Here's this whole crew. And it's from this the show. It's got information on when they play and the whole works in the back. So these are like promos. I'll show you my favorite one here. I've never, ever run into one of these. And I'm, I look at postcards... I can look at postcards almost every day of the week. This is an official advertising postcard from Walt Disney for the Three Caballeros. It's from the the time frame when it was supposed to be coming out. It's got song names on the back and the whole works. This is a, a premium. This is like a hundred, hundred twenty-five dollar card or better. I may have to keep it. I don't know. I don't keep many postcards, but I've never run into an original movie advertisement from Disney from this era. It'd be like the the Bugs Bunny poster or, or uh, 8x10 I showed you earlier. That's just one of those items I just never run into. I mean, there's some really fabulous ones in here. I got a whole bunch of the bombshells they would have been called in the day, too. Some of these are really nice. Again, all RPTCs, just to give you a little better idea. Again, some of these are actual signatures on these as well. Let me get that back in focus. Get that in focus. So that's that's just a few of those items there. It's paper. I mean, we're talking about no space for all this. Even the postcard book, that book will be discarded. All those postcards will be yanked out. Any information that's written on the little sleeves will be cut off and, and stuck with those as well. So as it goes through our, our, our process of listing, everything stays together from it. I do cut those all apart. We'll remove, as I said, all those items out of that postcard album. They'll all be sold individually or in lots if, if that's the best way to sell them. Um, let me show you the last one here, and we'll pop back to the chat from that point on. Now, this one's this one's this one's one of my favorites. Now, I'm not going to give you the name on this one because it's a known officer. This is someone fairly well known. The brother of this person was was a uh, cartoon artist. He did Snuffy Smith, and he actually, in fact, I got a letter of the guy's death, and I'm not going to read that because it's not very pleasant. But the person who owned this book is supposed to be this person here. It's really the per and the person who who's the brother of this person is this guy, the guy who drew this cartoon for in real life. Very well known one. What's important about this book here is it shows his entire progress, where he trained, where he went from day one into the military. It it has comments on here. And I'm gonna read you a few if my vision's not good enough. Uh, first combat or first battle with Germans this goes into a lot of detail and every date that's mentioned in here he has photos that correspond with these events now the interesting part in fact i'll show you a few other ones in here the interesting part on this this person was involved with the d-day invasion and easy company is all over this stuff the easy company from band of brothers in fact, there's a there's a letter about one of their deaths written by a general, which I have possession of here as well, and they're talking about an incident where they were. Uh, this is in the forest in Arden, I think. It's 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 basically follows along with an episode of Band of Brothers where they get lost in fog and they were doing a, a search or something. And they get ambushed. The person in this letter from this general is talking about giving a, a Congressional Medal of Honor to this person in this letter. It's a three-page letter. goes into detail on how he died, what was going on, the date as well, which all ties to all this. 
Easy Company is mentioned in here as well as um, Fox Company. And there's names mentioned of specifics of when this guy died. And you can pretty much track it from D-Day landing all the way through the Battle of the Bulge. This person was there in the forest. This person was there during the shellings. Um, there's not many pictures of other than a few scant ones of the actual combat, but here is some forest photos from the Battle of the Bulge. So, very, not the best ones. This one down here, in fact, let me switch over so I can see if you can see it. This one down here is one of the tanks that was used in the Battle of the Bulge. You can see the winter forest scene up at the top. This is from 1944. They're all dated, 1944 through 45, when the Battle of Bulge happened. Everything is in here. Everything corresponds with the dated information in the front of this book, which I am just, I'm, I'm floored. I, I just couldn't believe what I was reading when I'm reading the letters. Major Winters is in here. His name is mentioned in this paperwork I got with this. If you don't know who that is, watch Band and Brothers. So I'm, in, I'm, I'm this is, this is going to probably stay in my collection until I pass and my kid will get it because I've never in my life run into something that follows the guy from D-Day landing in, in Normandy, you know, training in England, you know, the whole works. Now, they didn't parachute in. This is an infantry company. But, I mean, they fought alongside of this. They were in, in Belgium, same time frame. I mean, everything corresponds. I could almost time this and, and sync this to, you know, the Band of Brothers. And I know it's not specifically from the, that group, but they're in here, they're mentioned in here, and, and I can almost be assured that some of the images in here show them as well. So I haven't looked through this too closely. I'm going to have to get out a loop. We're going to scan some of these and send them off to a few people because there's some phenomenal images here of some really unique uh, situations. Um, like they talk about taking a town over. Let me show you. Let me just show you a couple other ones in here because this one's really neat. Um, geez, it goes all over the place. Wherever they went, this book went with them. And it's got a custom leather gilt uh, names and stuff info on the back. There's even military maps that went pasted into this book too. So when they talk about being somewhere, they've got a map of them on that field in some cases. Uh, hang on, it'll be worth it with this one, I think. I know it's in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they took over this town. They took over this town. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. This is the Germans' white flag. And this is them surrendering. So if you can see, that's a German officer right there. This is them surrendering to this group of people here, this whole town. It mentions the town. It mentions some of these people, some of the names in here. This is stuff that I, I just don't run into. You just don't see something doubly tied to someone that well known. The last one of anything I've ever even seen sell like a... This is almost like a photo diary of this guy's time from D-Day. He died. He's dead. He, he passed. He was killed in action. Um, his body wasn't found until the next day. They were ambushed in heavy fog in the Argent Forest, I guess it would have been true this is this is all tied to a letter i have and in fact there's a couple other letters in here from the general who talked to this guy's mom to express his sorrow and there was a there was a fiasco because this guy said he was he died with honors but the the mom expected to get a congressional or a star out of it and that he didn't get one and this is the the general got mad at this other general telling him well, why why did why does the mom think this and blah 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 and it's 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 them trying to put forth the exact actions it says word for word how this gentleman died the whole duty of them going up front he was 600 yards behind enemy lines i mean it goes into some really really interesting details i've never read something like that in my life i've never seen something like this in person so I mean, I showed my son. My son was floored, and I mean, this is this has been the talk of of us for for an hour or so since we realized what I had. I saw it as military photos. I didn't pay much for it, you know. I'm I'm just surprised that you know they didn't read into this to know more about this. This is just I mean, this is this is like a almost irreplaceable piece of history with with photos and dates and combat action with letters tied to the people and you know. It, it's a very interesting and touching uh, look at World War II from the eyes of someone who fought from, from that day on D-Day, landed at D-Day. That was his first experience in combat. That was his first experience, his first boots in combat zone was D-Day 
was in there. I mean, it's it's just a phenomenal phenomenal piece of history in my book. I don't think I've ever run into something quite that extensive. I had some some um, flying tiger photos taken in China before uh, Pearl Harbor that, that were phenomenal too, but I didn't have all the the papers and locations and stuff. I mean, it had General Chanel and all that stuff, and we got a lot of money, but this one dwarfs that. This could be like a $2,500 or more. I don't know. I, I can guesstimate from the last the last flying tigers that this has got to be in that same level minimum fifteen hundred dollars minimum 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 probably well over that but this is one of those things you just don't see i don't see them i mean and i see a lot of crazy stuff stuff that's that's you know uh, you just don't run into as the average person i hunt this stuff down this is something that you know i wasn't just given this stuff i had to dig for stuff and source and even if even if a picker pulls it up, when I go to a picker's place, it's usually their house lately because of the winter or anything, they've got a lot of stuff there, uh, just oodles of stuff, stuff that I would no way be interested in. Usually there's tools and all kinds of other stuff. I, I could spend a couple hours there and, and just to find something like this. They may have bought it in a massive, a huge assortment of things. I mean, and for them, it's no big deal. The the Like the, the U.S. Navy ship book that I showed you the, that I got more of it, it could have been a box that they bought at a, 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 a antique sale or an auction 100 miles from my house you know it's stuff like that you know they may have bought it sight unseen too and then I get the call you know after they've built up enough stuff that's usually what happens um, let me pop down and get to some some comments questions if you're enjoying the conversation please slam that thumbs up there show some love for the channel Hey, Annie, I'm going to hit you up probably the, the first, the beginning of the week here, and we'll probably go for the week after that. But I'm still trying to get a couple more folks so I can run a couple of those. Didn't forget, Annie. Um, AJI 3 sales. Sales have been slow this week, less than half so far of last week. I am, I'm not trying to, you know, brag or nothing, but our sales are in the top like five percent of, of how high they've ever been i mean i'm right up there we're, we're bouncing back and forth between um best sale ever and second best sale ever um almost every other day one day it's great and the next day it'll be a little slower and then it's right back up again i've had a lot of stuff going out in the mail i mean quite a bit i i left real early today i had to do some errands the bmv takes forever um i had to take our dog to the vet um had to help my my oldest with the, getting him to the class because of a car issue, and I had to go out to the University of Toledo, and I had to pack up stuff. A lot of my employees right this moment are school exams, so I don't have many people work in here. So it's been a real hectic day, honestly. So anyway, sales, though, I'm very happy with my sales at this point. Now, I've been expressing this too. Let's let's talk about sales. What What's keeping my sales going? And I haven't dropped. I'm running sales, an actual sale, for two days, three days max. When one ends, I, I'm going... One of the kids is leaving. What, basically what I'm doing is I'll run a sale for like two days or three days. I'm not doing sell similar until that sale ends. The minute the sale ends, then I'm sell similar to 3,000 items for whatever length. So if it's if it's two days I'm running the sale, I'll have to run 2,000 uh, sales items. When that sale ends... After two days, I'll run 2,000 more, sell similar. So whenever a sale ends, I'm selling similar, and then immediately coming back in and doing a sale for two or three days only at most. I tried the five-day, the two and the three-day sales work the best. Don't ever run a sale longer than, say, five days ever on eBay, in my opinion. The red, hey, the sales ending really gets some attention. If I'm not running sales, even if it's only a 10% sale off, my, my sales will slowly edge on down so if you're not selling similar the same thing happens if you combine sell similar you know so when your sale ends do sell similar run the sale again for for two days and then come back in and sell similar i'm still going to be selling similar every one of my listings every month i'm just splitting up instead of doing them every single day i'm waiting i don't want any interaction ruining it by selling similar by doing it when auctions are running, or not auctions, when sales are running. I don't want to mess with the markdowns. It ends it when if, if those are the items that are doing it, a bunch of stuff like that. So, um, And when I do sell similar, I'm just, whatever one's ending first and been up the longest, those are the ones I'm selling similar first. And in all honesty, it's kept sales just not trickling. They've been coming in, you know, full steam, pretty, pretty heavy right now. 
Um, other sites, we're getting traction on those just as well with eBay. So this month, last month was just a whopper. It was the second highest month. It ended the second highest I've ever had on eBay, ever, 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 ever. Even in the good old days, last month was only this was the second highest. You know, if we would have done another fifty-six dollars, I would have been. It would have been my number one month last month. It was fifty-six dollars off. That's how close it was. So this month, again, we've been pushing. I want to get some uh, new stuff up. We've been taking a few shortcuts. We've been just trying to get mass quantity of whatever else we can get up. Not just on this store, but all of our other stores as well, too. So we've got some folks working. Wife's doing some listings on our other store now. I popped some Amazon stuff up while I was waiting at the vets. You know, stuff like that. I do tear, carry a laptop with me quite often, so I don't know what everybody else does. If I'm waiting on the car or something or, or whatever the case, I usually have a laptop with me. I've even edited videos in, in a, a when I was having tires put on once before. So, you know, you do what you got to do. I hate wasting time at, at a car place. We've got warranty and all that stuff, but, I mean, it's, it's the principle. I like to be going from the minute I'm up until it's time to quit and I'm done. Today, again, I've been up and working, running since, well, that'd be what, almost 14 hours. And that's typical, typical of my days anyway. I'm wired, though, without all that sugar. I'm telling you, I, I feel like I'm ready to go all the time. Um, Real Deal McNeil, how are you doing this evening? JVTZ1, how are you doing? Welcome. And there's Dom. I thought I saw Dom coming in. How are you doing, Dom? I'll have you a date tomorrow, as I said, Dom. Um, and again, if you haven't watched Primetime Treasure Hunter, I would honestly recommend giving him a look. Uh, it was one of the few channels that um, gives out great data, great information. And we got right below that, we've got Dave Midwest Picker is here too. He's got a great channel as well. I know he had some issues. I think he's back doing full, full time videos again, if I'm not mistaken. Two good guys there, obviously, very well. Tommy Z, how are you doing? Tommy Z, longtime follower of many of us. Brenda Strock, how are you doing? Howdy from Northwest Ohio. Well, welcome, welcome. I'm in Northwest Ohio, too. Uh, Aloha from Hawaii. How are you doing, Mary, uh, May A? See the lights. Interesting turn on words. Vintage Vagabond Vens. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Trina, how are you doing? Trina, hopefully you're doing well. Let me slide down. I know I'm always behind. Zemper 5, 1918. Slowly picking up sales. I, We haven't... I haven't been rushing to list like super, super valuable stuff. I've got some stuff that I'm like, eh, if we need some quick cash, I can always just list that. That stack has been growing and growing and growing. The stuff I'm showing you, like the Robert Mitchum autograph, that'll sit here. Everything is for sale at some point. I'll hang on to it for a while, like the John Wayne. If, if I get bored with it or I want something else, I'll end up selling the John Wayne. Um, stuff like that goes extremely well. John Wayne sorted PSA, you know, you might get five, six hundred. I could probably do better on like a heritage auction, which I may do with some of these. I've been sending off a few things here and there to some uh, specific uh, item specific auction houses lately. And I've been actually getting more than I would have probably if I pieced them out on eBay. Plus, I didn't have to spend the time. Even after my commission on some buttons we sold, I probably got almost 35%, maybe a little higher, maybe 36 or 37% more than if I would have pieced them out. Plus, I had no time invested into them. I mounted them on a card. That's about it. And then sent them off that way. Um, we sold some railroad items on a railroad site. We did fairly well on those. I did, I did uh, contact Heritage myself. We're sending something off to them as well. There's other options besides eBay. Not trying to dog eBay again because eBay right this minute is is rolling. And I've got some major issues with with what what they're doing, but at least we have we have some options with sell similar, running sales, quick sales. Even if you run a sale for a day and then sell similar as soon as that sale ends and then do sell similar or not do sell. Run a sale, that sale ends after a day. Do sell similar on, on a certain amount of items and then run the sale again and keep redoing that constantly. It will always show activity on your account. In all honesty, the sales, the, the biggest part of running a sale is getting the, the ability to send out offers to watchers. Most of my items sell as an offer to a watcher or an offer comes in. Most of them. Uh, today I sold three or four decent items for full price, but I mean, you know, I, I don't mind, whatever the case may be. The, our, you know, List price is usually way higher than I expect to get out of it anyway. If I get it, I'm even happy. Let's see where we at on here. Andrew Valenti, how are you doing? 
Well, welcome back. I I recognize you. I see the sunglasses on the on the your your image there. Happy holidays to you as well, Andrew. Are you a collector? Good evening as well. Yeah, I love the vintage stuff. I can never get enough of this stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm like in hog heaven when I see stuff like this. Uh, Blender right. Welcome, as we said. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Crystal Walters. How are you doing? Howdy. I wrote that down. I've got Penny Singleton over here. I'm gonna. I'll look that up. But that's not the signature on there. Um, yeah, I, I thought Irene Dunn did an excellent job in uh, Beverly Hillbillies. Autographed celebrity photos aren't long tail in my book. There's other places to sell them besides eBay that will do very well. If you list an autographed, PSA, slabbed photo on Amazon, you, you can do fairly well, and it doesn't sit there forever, believe it or not. There's, there is a market. Amazon is trying to recoup some of the collectibles market. They just bought, um, I think, something that deals with NFTs and vaulting, some card site now. I heard there's going to be a push on Amazon for collectibles, so I hope that's the case because, you know, we're on gated in collectibles on Amazon, and I would love to be able to, you know, do a little more in value on Amazon with some of the collectibles. Usually we get more on Amazon with NOS, and the same case is, is with some of the, the vintage, like 78. So I usually get more on a 78 on Amazon by 25, 30%, almost all, probably almost all the time, I would say, with like 78 records. I'm talking pre-war ones. They sell on Amazon, believe it or not. Yeah, I'll definitely look that up, Mike, as I said. Uh, let's see here. Sean Marie Mon, keep the bugs. Yeah, I may keep the bugs, Bunny. Andy Robinson, how are you doing? Judy Holiday, is that that one? I'm going to type that one because I don't have my pen here. That's probably the other one. The other one we showed you with the darker hair would be my guess. I'll have to look on that one, too. I'm not sure. Judy Holiday, now that does sound more like a, a that. In fact, where did it go? Yeah, I got other ones here. Nope, that doesn't look like Judy Holiday either. I don't know. I'm I'm puzzled. I'll look it up later though. Anyway, I won't take up too much of the chat with talking about that. Where'd we back go here? Hang on, now my feed just bounced all over. Uh hang on, hang on, hang on. My feed's all over the place now. I just don't want to lose any. Charles Holmes. Now that sounds more like it, actually. That, in fact, that does sound like it, actually, right there. I'm gonna take a second because that's that looks like what the first name is. Now that I see that, and the last name does look like that's who that is. Now that you say that, I'm sorry. I know I said I wouldn't look it up, but now I'm. I'm That does look like who this is. Chelsea, that is that is who this is. Yep, that is this is. There's the same picture with her name on it. It's a known, it, it it's a known outfit too with that necklace. It's Chelsea Holmes. Well, thank you. Whoever who was that? Who was that? Um, that is who that is. That actually is. And you can see the signature now that you say that. C e l e s. Yeah, that is definitely who that is. <laughs> Where'd we go? Yep. Regina Hoffman. Well, thank you very kindly. That you, You've you named that one. And I wish I had my pencil here because I would have lightly written that on the back. But I'll keep that window open. That is who that is. I'm surprised. I'll have to look look her up. I see pictures. It's definitely her, though. That's, that's interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mitch. Gene Harlow. No, I wished it was Gene Harlow. I wished. I really need to diversify my sourcing. I've mainly been sticking to Goodwill because mine is really good. We went to Goodwill the other day. What did I... I don't have it here. I think the wife kept it. We found one single fish ornament. It was like an anthropomorphic fish ornament. My kid found... Uh, my, my youngest found a Russian jacket. Um, I think that's really about it. And we spent 20 or 30 minutes there. The store is like half the size it used to be. I can't find anything at a thrift store around here. I, I I swear to you, there's almost nothing. 
Um, and we almost never go to Goodwill, but we were out some an event we were supposed to be um, helping with that ended up getting canceled. Long story short, um, we ended up just hitting a couple of thrift stores while we were out and stuff. And anyway, I, I hate Goodwill around here too. They they do auctions, so most of the good stuff goes to the auction, and then it goes for more than it's worth me buying it for. So I I don't pass. I mean I just pass it off. I was looking at some records. Somebody gave me a, a heads up on a record lot they were selling. The record lot went for more than I could sell all of them combined on eBay at top dollar. Right? There's just, it just it was just it was a collector buying them obviously or someone just trying to give them you know donation money or something I don't know but it was a waste of my time. If you got a good if yours is great I'm more power to you I don't blame you at all but branching out and finding stuff has been the best because no one else is looking for it no one else is sorting down to who might own this or who was a producer for a TV series or a, cha a radio station, TV channel or something. No one pays attention to local theaters that used to, you know, advertise and do this and who owns them now, what might be in the buildings and stuff. I love buildings that have been closed down for 20 or 30 years because you never know what you're going to find in them. I've talked about how to find who owns them. It's, it's fairly easy if you spend some time. Now, getting them to call you back is the hard part. That's where you've got to make yourself a, a wall sign. or a, I've got one of the dry eraser boards, and I write down names and phone numbers and stuff. And if I, if I don't hear from them you know, the first couple of times, I write it where I call like you know, once a week, twice a week, or I'll rotate the times I try and get in touch with them. And that's how I find stuff. That's how you can get stuff that's really good stuff. You don't want what just gets thrown on the market all the time because everybody has that opportunity to get those. I love the the sourcing out and finding stuff. I wouldn't be sitting on like some of the items we have now. All the posters, man. I've got, I don't know, a couple thousand posters here. Uh, I'm only listing a small section of those right now, but there's, there's some value in all those sorts of things. And there are things that you can buy in bulk that just too many people aren't thinking outside the box. If you're not paying attention, you're not going to be able to find this stuff. If you're not digging for it, if you're not interested in finding it, if you're telling yourself, I'm never going to find it, Don finds stuff no one finds. Uh, how, how am I finding if nobody finds it? Everything I find is stuff that anybody else could find if they look for it. I'm nothing special. I'm just the first one to think about getting it from this source or that source or whatever. You know, I, I, it's just it's the way it is. You've got to figure out a way around your area, whether you get a picker, whether you get a couple pickers, whether you draw a map out and do a big circle like we did and figure out every little spot out there that might have something that you're not thinking of. Sometimes I'll just drive when we're out if we're like traveling and going to pick up something. Once in a while, if there's a town or a little small strip area we hadn't been through, we might drive through there just to see what's going out. The other day I found a store. We haven't been into it yet because I haven't been back over there, but I found a store that had been open probably for months that I hadn't seen that's got nice stuff looking in the windows. It looks fairly cheap, cheaply priced anyway. I'll have to check that out. But there's always something that pops up. You never know. And it's it's popped up since the pandemic started. So it's like a second-hand place. Oh, where are we going now? Vintage Vani, uh, local estate sales. Local estate sales are good too, but around here, what I find the most of the time is the estate company, unless they're ones that I personally know and deal with, they have people come in the night before and buy all kinds of stuff. They'll let people come in early all the time. Sometimes they yank the stuff out and will list it online, the good stuff, and you're left with waste of time standing in line for hours. Or there'll be people who wait the night before and be the first ones in the door and get all the good stuff. It happens so many times around here. I just I, I haven't been to a state seal in I don't know how long, you know. Unless unless it was like the last day and I wasn't rushing to get anything. I'm not going to fight anymore. I don't I don't go to big crowded places like that where everybody fights. And that's what it seems to be. Everybody's greedy. And when I'm out sourcing, I don't care if I get everything. I'm always leaving stuff on the table. I get what I think's cool and what will sell better or great for me. You, you look at my videos. I even the haul ones. I'm I'm going out haul sourcing out at a flea market this weekend so I will have some video coming up beginning of the week I have not been to a flea market uh, Donald in geez a long time like a year or so so I don't know which flea market that would be but I have not been to a flea market in a very long time I will be going to one this weekend though um, Bobby McNeil I found somebody you can have by learning from you as well thank you very kindly <laughs> 
Yeah, I I used to ask all the stories. Unless it's historical or it can add to the value, I don't I don't spend any time digging into it like that. Time is money for me, so I'm I'm strictly business. When I'm out there, I'm looking for what I want. I want to get it, get a price, buy it, and get out of there. That's it, so I can get to somewhere else or I can do something else. Uh, there's nothing wrong with taking time and talking and asking the questions and all that, but. Uh, man, I I I I can cut out so much time. If I start talking, I'll be there forever. And I'm I'm a talker, so I, I I hate to do that. I'm I'm literally all you know. I got tunnel vision when I'm out. I'm just literally looking for whatever I can find. If I'm in an antique mall, I'm zooming through there. You know, I'm um I've got it down to a T. You know, where I'm not going to miss anything. I hit the good booths and I hit the good items and I just move through there real quickly. Um, I like the big antique malls. If you go to an I, I'd far do an antique mall over an estate sale. Only because estate sales are always a fight and all this stuff. There's there's so many people that don't know enough about everything they buy. They'll throw it in an antique mall for ten bucks and it might be a hundred dollar item. I see that all the time. Postcards are it's notorious for people with postcards because they won't they don't know enough. They know they can get some money out of them. They'll just sit there and write prices on them all day long and not look them all up. And that's a, a perfect way for me to make you know good money. That's where we started doing this. I used to do uh, estate sales for one. We used to do a lot of. And then antique malls. So any antique mall I would go to, I'd always make a couple hundred bucks every single time I went. And that got to be a big thing. So I hit them constantly. You know, I, I knew every one. I still know all, all the big ones around here. I know every one for like 125 miles from here, probably all the way down to Columbus. In fact, I know quite a few good ones in, in the Columbus area and even farther down south. Dayton has a real good one. I think it's Jeffries, I think it's the name of it, for those who know that area. Um, Dayton, Ohio. Trina, I have an Oklahoma packet of postcards. They drop down and are printed on both sides. Color. Those are cheap old booklets, <clears throat> probably worth nothing. Dime a dozen. None of those booklets. I wouldn't mess. I would never mess with buying those unless they're, unless they're. Hang on, just sucking here. Let me see. I think I got a neat one here. This is what you're talking about. One of these, but this one's for. I might have shown this one here and there. I don't remember if I have or not. This one's for a very specific place, and then it's got some images down there. This is for a fort. Now, this is a different story. The last one I had was from a hospital, and it was a very specific hospital from World War One. And this is probably World War One or before Chillicothe, Ohio, Camp Sherman, very well known around here anyway. Um, so these are booklets. The only ones I buy would be stuff like this, something really rare, maybe a Raphael Tuck of a U.S. site. Bases, forts, battalion headquarters, hospitals, like military hospitals and stuff, those are different. You, if you're if you're going to buy any of these sorts of things, buy ones from small, tiny, obscure things like this. Man, this one might be 75 bucks right here because of where it's from. It's unused, too. Excellent condition. This is the type that, that I pick up whenever I can. And they're like the specifically... My most uh, sought-after type if I'm going to get a booklet. I've, I turn down booklets all the time. I've had boxes of them brought up to me. And, you know, I'll say the whole box for 60 bucks. I still wouldn't buy it because I just don't want to peddle. With, they're, they're like $5 for most of them because they're not really a postcard. They're folders. So I would be careful with those, uh, Trina. Don't ever spend more than a few cents on almost any of those. That one I spent a dollar on. But I'm gonna, it, it's, it's going to be a good one, I promise. Whenever I get it up, I've had it for a little while now. Um, Axel Rosa, how are you doing? Moved from moved to Cleveland from Massachusetts. Now I've been to Cleveland many times. In fact, we're going to Cleveland next week just for a quick uh, half a day there and back to pick something up. And I've been to Massachusetts quite a few times too. That's where Annie's from as well. Brimfields, we I love the Brimfield area. Yep, Tommy Z, that is correct. Yeah, but you'll see that they use church towers. Kelly's Heroes, there's a there's a, a church tower in there where they're ringing the bell and stuff. It always reminds me of that whenever I see stuff like that. Kelly's Heroes is a movie if you don't know what that is. Kelly Savalas, isn't it? Um, uh, Clint Eastwood, Real Deal McNeil, the Shell and Arrow military do great, awesome images. Yeah, I, I love those sorts of things too. They're German. I mean, they were. It's all verboten. So I mean, it's all German printed cards. They're not American cards. They weren't made for us. They were made for those people who are in those trenches. Uh, Annie.
any pretty uh, Ciano type. Yeah, I love the Ciano types. I always do very well with those. You, you got to put that in the title too, Ciano type, which is the blue ones there. Almost always I get a sale, even on the common looking images. If they're a nice image, it's clear, they always sell. 10 bucks on average for most any of those. I may only have one or two up in my entire store now, and I've had dozens of them. Uh, chances are, like a Ciano type, the sell through rate's like 70, 75%. You know, as long as the image is good, it's clear, it's got at least something interesting in it. There's people who, I've seen books of cyanotypes. I mean, books as, as well as the red ones as well. Um, if it flips, it ships. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? Angelo, yes, there are quite a few in Ohio. That's why I don't source like everybody else, because I'd be fighting everybody else. Um, let me pop back up here. I don't want to lose my feed. Dead people stuff. I hear that. I get I get people who say all kinds of rude, nasty things to me when I tell them what I do, or they see me out in public. But I mean, it's money. It's it's a it's a valid <clears throat> valid way to make money, and I'm I'm letting stuff survive longer. A lot of the stuff people just don't care about. We might just throw it out. You know, you never know. I've seen it before in person. Uh, let's see here. Sean Marie Mon, is it better to have it thrown away? Nope. Better to have dead people's stuff cherished by someone else. That's exactly what I think. Thank you, Crystal. Silk, S-Y-L-K. Do you only sell on eBay? No, I sell eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Walmart, HIP. Um, geez, I got a couple other smaller sites, too. Plus, I do send now. We're doing auction sites. There's a couple that have auctions quarterly, and there's a couple that run them once a month that we are dealing with now, too. They're more specialized items, but the people that buy at these are only there for those items anyway. So they're diehard. Some of the values just go insane compared to what I've seen stuff go for on eBay. So, uh, Artie Mike, 6 to 12 inches Friday here in Minnesota. Wow. Yeah, I think we've got something supposed to be coming our way, too. We had half an inch it was snowing last night actually pretty heavy but it's all melted since thank you susan appreciate it i cut my own hair i i know that might seem weird but i just got a shaver and i've gotten good at angling it and all that stuff uh, all because of the pandemic i'd probably just go in but i don't mind doing it i shave and do all that stuff anyway Debbie from Chicago, I have a little woman uh, poster from uh, the 40s signed by Margaret O'Brien. Is it worth anything? You'd have to know for sure it was a correct, <clears throat> real signature. You'd have to make sure the signature was good to know for sure. Now, if you're talking like if it's a movie poster, you'd have to make sure it was a real movie poster as well, too. Um, a poster from that time frame would probably have an NSS number, National Screen Service. It might, Republic Pictures, whoever put the picture out, it, there should be some numbering system with a date. Um, or something like that on the bottom. Every, every, do I have one right here I can show you? Um, yeah, actually I do. Hang on, let me, I can show you one here. Something, let's see if I got something with a number on it. Um, okay, yeah, here we go. Here's, here's something I can show you. Uh, what's this from? The Cool and the Crazy. Most, let me see so you can see this. Let me get it in focus there. Now, this number here, you're going to see something like that in um, most real photo stuff from movies and things like that. A poster will have a similar number. Um, if they're by uh, National Screen Service, it'll say NSS, and then it'll have this set of numbers. Now, in this case, the first number, the smaller number, is the year it was put out, that movie. The second number is that movie. is it, It's the number of the movie it came out in. So this was 1958, and it was the 143rd movie put out. So that's that's what that means on there. If it has that, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's real movie promotional material. Like 99.9% .9 of the time. And that's that stands and holds true. I worked at a movie theater for many years, and everything that came in had an NSS number on it. All the stills, the lobby cards, the promotional posters, half sheets, um, double sheets, even the everything we had had those number system on it. And I've learned very well. You can tell if they're reproductions as well and all that kind of stuff too. So I did have another guy scam me the other day. Um, he bought a postcard and then he said it looked fake and he wanted to return it. And I look in his store and he makes copies 
of people's postcards and then sells copies of them. He digitally scans them. So all he did was scan my card, and now I reported them. I, I filed. Last one I reported, eBay did take action and did remove them because the person was opening as returning all the stuff. So they're buying dozens and dozens of items, claiming some BS thing. The card I know is real. I took it out of the family collection myself, so I know it's not a fake card. But I, I talked to eBay twice on this one, too, because you can clearly see he's ripping off people's stuff and making copies. And it's a well-known person that somebody told me, too. So I'm very bothered that they're still doing this kind of BS and eBay allows them. But this, th th there might be some, some changes on that happening. As I said, they did take action on one that, that was reported for opening up fake returns. If anybody returns something to you, always open up a case. When you refund them, go back in and open up a secondary case too. If they win, I challenge it every time because this guy is lying to me. There's nothing wrong with the card. It's 100% original. He knows that he can tell by the back. He wanted my image to scan a direct copy, and he sells 8x10s of these images. Uh, you know, It looks just like the real thing as he scanned the actual object which is it's BS that they're doing this because I'm out the, the fees and have to deal with free return shipping. So, But when you open up the case, they'll reimburse me for that return shipping and I won't lose my fees. They should also ding him from what I was told too when you do that. So if somebody returns something that's not right or they're lying about a return, make sure you actually open up a case and you know a case against them for a fraudulent return. If they get a bunch of those, eBay shuts them down. So don't let those slide ever. Don't ever let those slide. I looked through this guy's store, I looked at his feedback. He's a copier and trying to insinuate that I'm selling a copy. It, it, the, the whole idea was ludicrous. I mean, I'm, I'm, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have the card back, hopefully. It's going to be the right card and all that. But these are the type of people who are just crooks, in my opinion. Um, huge loop. Oh, I got a bunch of these. I've got some vision issues, so I use these. This is a, a table loop, basically. I have a lighted one now, too. The ring inside here, you can get them. It has LEDs around the inside of this part here on the new one. And it's it's battery powered too if you want, but I just I have a USB cord. Um, I don't remember the name, but I've got like four of these now. And you can just drop it on the table and it works great. I mean, if you have vision problems, these are awesome. Um, they use them at photo studios for uh, slides and stuff like that. So anyway. <clears throat> Still have my eBay shirt that they ripped me off for. I was supposed to get it for free and they ended up keeping $10 of my money for the eBay open thing they canceled. But anyway, it's not even my size, but that's how good eBay is. Let's pop on down here. Let's see where we go. Annie Austin, how are you doing? Bob McNeil, so much to find and the history will be told by us. Well, thank you very kindly, Bobby. Debbie from Chicago, AB Corp written down, <clears throat> dead people's stuff equals history, it sure does. You have an Aunt Jemima lucky coin from World's Fair. I don't know, that doesn't sound quite right from the 1880s. I could be wrong. I don't know how far back Aunt Jemima goes, honestly. Uh, I'm trying to find history on Aunt Jemima. 1889. So it would be the 1893 World's Fair. Uh, that'd be the only one that I could think of, unless it was the 18... Well, that would be too early, too. It would have to be the Chicago World's Fair, 1883-92, uh, if you have it. Um, if it has the image of Aunt Jemima, eBay would probably block it, I would say, as well, for sure. Um, probably Del Camps, I would think, might be the best place, in all honesty. That would probably be my bet. Um, there's actually a couple token uh, sites that do token auctions, too, but I don't think that would be worth enough in my book on that. You could always list it even on, um... Jeez, I don't know. Craigslist, I don't know. Maybe Facebook Marketplace. I don't use Facebook Marketplace, so I don't. I couldn't tell you. Um, I'd hang on to it and take it to a show, a coin show probably would be what I would do. But I go to coin shows anyway. 
steampunk card. I love steampunk too. I hate to say it, but hey, Bob, how you doing, Bob? Again, for those in Patreon, there is a new video up. It's I don't know, 25, 28 minutes, something like that. Posters. I'm gonna have a couple more on uh, how to shoot photos and do that kind of stuff too. We'll show you a few other things. I do have a repair video I'm putting together too because I had a, quite a few questions when I showed out the last video for Patreon on the live show. Um, I had quite a few questions on the the bridge lucky uh, cigarette cards that I showed you. Um, I might iron one of those out and kind of show you because those are a little tricky as well. So, And I've got a couple pieces of paper I want to repair. Um, there's a few things I set aside I've been looking to repair, honestly. I can show you how to repair those lace cards as well, too, with the backing and, and rice paper. The whole works probably, too. Yeah, I wish I could give you a better answer, Classic Rock, on that. <clears throat> the only thing I could tell you is maybe don't put um, Aunt Jemima in the title. List it in the token section under the coins and just put um, pancake syrup, <coughs> syrup token and just leave it at that. I would probably show her on the back if you're tempted to risk listing it, would be my guess. If they told you, though, not to list it and they pulled the item, I would not try to list it again, though. <clears throat> That's the only thing I, I should say. I, I would never try to do it a secondary time if they told me not to, just FYI. Boy, we're running long. I didn't realize it was running so long. Angelo, a lot of people don't they don't know enough about it. They don't want to spend the time. It's not worth anything to them. It's not cool to them. They want to push out this. A lot of people push the clothing aspect of it. And I, I can't stand clothing at all. I hate to say it, but I, I can't stand it anymore. Other than leather jackets, I mean, I still, I still buy leather jackets. I've got like 70 for myself, and I probably should stop buying them. But I, I just, I love leather jackets. I do try to wear most of them. I've got a couple I won't put out in the rain. I don't want to get them wet because they're just like my my prize, my baby, I guess I would say. But, but thank you, Angelo. Patricia Phoenix, how are you doing? I see eBay is promoting eBay Mobile. eBay, eBay instead of like separating like a site and the phone app, they've kind of intermingled them now. I hate, 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 hate how your notifications, you, you can't click on one single offer. So if I've got 10 offers that come in in the past, even just a couple months ago, you could see each one. So I would know which one I wanted to click on. Now it just says 10 or 20 offers waiting to be accepted. You click on that. Then it takes you to a page, which I hate to set up on. So I, it, it's set up like the phone. And my phone, I at least can still click on individual ones and mess with them that way. But I, I hate the way they're steering it. I do think it's essential to steer it or at least to have the accessibility to have the phone apps. But the problem with eBay's phone app, it's not full feature. It doesn't offer all the features. So if they're going to limit the app, it's pointless to mess with all the other crap if they're not going to offer a full feature cell phone app. That's what, what other sites that do have that do better on. Amazon. I can do pretty much anything on the Amazon app on my phone. I can check prices. I can do all kinds of stuff. I can figure out my profit. I can anything I want to do pretty much on that. Even Walmart's app is better than eBay's app. Walmart, I mean, come on. And Walmart's who's running eBay basically now, but their app works better. I can see the hidden prices. I can price check anything I want in my own stores. Wherever I go, I can price check from my own phone without ever having to worry. That's how I find the hidden sale prices on stuff, stuff that they never put the little stupid sales sticker on. Happens all the time at Walmart. I'll go through a toy aisle. People have passed it up because they looked at the tags of 12 bucks. I'll scan it with my phone, and it's $1.99. I don't know how much how much um, RA retail arbitrage I've gotten that exact same way. I mean, I've gotten a lot of stuff from, from just using my phone because no one else seems to know you can do that. You know, somebody told me I should put a video, but there's a lot of people with videos out. I don't want to just copy somebody else's, but if I go to Walmart, I scan the toy section to see if there's clearance I'm missing. Do it every time. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. We're going to end it in just a few minutes because we're running really late. I didn't realize that. Thank you, Christopher Zane. Welcome in.
Yeah, Bobby McNeil's or McLean's talking about NFTs. I'm not into the NFT thing. I think that's just a fad. It's mostly at these, my opinion. I know other people have had some luck with them, but in my opinion, it's just a fad. It's another way of Wall Street getting their, their grips on here. And that's where it seems to be going is, like Mr. Wonderful, I do listen to him occasionally. He's got, he's got a decent YouTube channel, but he's doing nfts and watches and i'm sorry but this is for high-end people and I'm, I'm just i'm done with the nft thing in my opinion i'm not going to mess with it at all i don't care what what's going on it's just not it doesn't interest me and i don't money is is money fine fine but i'm not i don't want to do something i'm not interested in just for the money sake of it I, if i was that way i'd take all kinds of advertisements and sponsorships and all kinds of crap like that I, i'm not interested i just i don't care i like i like handling all the antiques and looking at stuff like this it, it's a thrill to me that's more thrilling than making a a million dollars i did it honestly is i'd rather have the history aspect of it make a little less money and and enjoy it i don't i'm not a big fan of nfts at all uh it, it's just not me i just I, I just don't see the value in the long run i don't see it being a long tail item just i know some folks who lost a whole bunch of money just the other day on bitcoin when bitcoin took the dive too i'm, I'm just not i'm not there yet in any of that angela don't fall yeah some people would hate to go to those places and don't track stuff down like that but i'm i'm all in on it Yep, Robert Preston. Tommy Z, yeah, I, I've got a lot of inventory, and that's all we do. I Again, it, it's taken me, what are we on, 13, year 13, a full-time 14? I don't know. I'd have to pull out the calendar again, but I've been doing this full-time for that long, part-time for 28 years, 27 years, something like that. Once you've done it for a long time, it's... It gets a lot easier. That's all I should say. Far too many people think this is really, really easy. For some people, it is. But for me, it hadn't been until the last, say, eight or so years. Last so many years since we've gotten so many items up, things have just moved. Once we started branching out from not just eBay to other places, it's it, each other place we bounced out to, even if it's not a huge sum, it all adds up. I mean, if I only make you know $100 a week on a small site, that's $400 a month. You know, at $4,800 a year. I do that with two or three small sites. It's 15000 roughly in that range extra year from three sites making that kind of money. You cut down costs, you know, 20 bucks a month on costs on this. Again, that all adds up. You do, you cut costs, you know, $100 a month, $1,200 a year you got, you've now made. The more you save, the more you make. And far too many people, you know, look at that and, and don't pay much attention to that either. Switching out light bulbs saved us an electric bill, like 60 or 64, 65, something like that, going all to LEDs. We cut down the cost. There's, there's always lights running, you know, um, better equipment. There's all kinds of things you can do to save money. An investment in light bulbs is, is like a long time return. You get a return from that point on. We get big, uh, the bulbs that last forever, warranties. I keep the receipts, you know, all, every little bit makes you more money not driving randomly around and, tr and riding your, your pathway out to get the, the, the shortest route saves you gas money and time and I know that all seems petty but if you you sell a few extra dollars on another site maybe only a couple items a week that's a couple more you didn't have before you save on gas you add all that stuff up between selling on smaller sites sm uh, selling a few things here and a few things there um, listing maybe some oddball item on Craigslist once in a while or, you know, word of mouth sales that I, I sell to sell to people, saving money from doing, you know, saving time, cutting out things like, <coughs> excuse me, like chatting with people a lot out in public when I'm trying to do my, my business. I, I save and I make more money that way. And at the end of the year, I've made tens of thousands of extra dollars just by doing little tiny changes because they all add up. And then, then they, 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 they balloon out they keep going they get bigger and bigger the more stuff you have on other platforms you're selling three in a, in a couple months four items a week five items a week ten items a week as as time goes by as you get more and more items on each other's site it, it, it's it's a no-brainer expanding out and then once you're on multiple sites your stuff can't be avoided anymore if those if there's people that want those specific items because whatever site they go to 
Maybe they don't like eBay. Maybe they, they go to Etsy. I've got the same similar items or most of the items on other platforms too so they can see them. Some items I only list on certain platforms though for various reasons. But overall, the more sites you can be on, the more sales you're going to have. I mean, it's it's a no-brainer. We're going to let it go on that because I'm, I'm running on the 140 mark and I know I never like to go that long. Usually I've talked all day long like I have now. I've been up since six something on the road. So we're going to end it off on here. Hopefully everybody has having or has been having a, a good uh, sales week. I know some folks said it's a little slow, but depending on what you're selling, it'll start off slow right after the holidays, and then it usually bumps back up. It's I know it's been a little past the holidays, but we're still selling just fine. Um, again, I'm hammering the store. I spend somebody here spends hours, a couple hours every single day, tweaking stuff sell similar running um, sales as soon as I'm done here I'm going to do a couple sales we're gonna sell similar and, and roll it back on to that same thing again too just like I said earlier in the video but I'm gonna let everybody go I do appreciate it if you haven't hit the thumbs up please slam that thumbs up hope you all have a good day and once again thanks for your support for the channel <laughs>